You better be ready to say your prayers because we're demon hunting. I can save you. You don't have to be afraid of them anymore. I planted fear in creatures who could not fathom that emotion. This week I'm jumping into a retro horror game, The Padre. The game starts off with the character, main character, a priest, the Padre. He has some car troubles and he actually pulls up next to this kind of big creepy mansion and he decides, like any good horror movie and the main character, to check it out. Uh, so the style of this game, it's a very voxel, kind of pixelated style game, very similar to a Minecraft looking. Uh, so right off the hop, for certain people, the art style may turn you away, but for me, I actually kind of thought it was kind of kind of neat for a horror style game. It's not something you would normally see, I think, in this genre of game. And when I say horror, I'm gonna actually use that term a little bit loosely because the main character, Padre, he actually has some kind of witty, funny things that he says throughout the game, so it kind of lightens the mood. It doesn't feel like maybe as scary as maybe some other horror games feel. But in this one, it's very point and click. I played this game on PC, and what I found when I first got into it, it's all fixed camera angles, unless I press space bar when I enter a room to kind of change my camera angle. And I found it very difficult to move around the different areas of the mansion. And there's a lot of puzzles in this game. So when you enter certain rooms, you're looking for particular items. And when you enter a room, sometimes there's a puzzle you have to solve before you get said item. Or sometimes you walk into a room and you see multiple items around that you need to gather for crafting, but there's a puzzle you have to solve to get them. And for me, I kind of didn't really like walking into a room where I saw the things I needed, but I couldn't physically get to them. I had to get a puzzle or solve a puzzle, sorry, to make it all kind of happen. For me, I'd like it to be maybe a little more hidden. But the thing is, is the puzzles in this game can be a little difficult because when you first get into it, there's not a whole lot of direction. And not that I'm looking for hand-holding for this game, it's just, they don't really give you a whole lot to go with. So you're looking at all these items in this room and you're trying to figure out how they all kind of work together to solve the puzzle. So for people that are really into these kind of point and click puzzlers, they're gonna love this game. There's definitely a challenging aspect to it. And when I say challenging, it's definitely that. Because when you move around this game, uh, your movement and your combat is all done with the mouse on the PC. So I have to click to move, but I also have to click to attack and I found it kind of difficult when I ran into particular enemies in the game moving around and also trying to defeat them at the same time because this game's a one-hit kill style game and when you die in this game uh, it kind of cuts to another scene and there's a, a vial and it says angel tears on it and every time you die a couple more drops start to fill the vial and as you progress through this game, you try your best to obviously not get killed, but it's gonna happen. Uh, Cause there's some areas in this game where you try to maybe attack certain zombies that may be roaming around the house. And the weapons I have to start are all melee based. You don't find guns till a little bit later on. And it's difficult to get those melee attacks in without getting hit yourself, I found, with the controls and the camera angle. So I noticed that this vial starts to fill up pretty quickly, especially if you start dying often and what I found out is if that vial gets full it will wipe all your progress and I don't know anybody that doesn't like to have something like that happen I mean you're playing a game you're putting a lot of time solving these difficult puzzles and if I die too many times it's gonna wipe all my progress I have to start from the beginning again for me that was a huge kind of turn off on this one because it is kind of a difficult game to get used to and when you start dying and this starts happening the last thing you want is to erase all the hard work you put into it to this point. So for me, that was definitely kind of a, a hit or a miss, sorry for this one, and I just didn't really like that aspect of it. But I'm not gonna let that take away from kind of how the game is fun to play. There's definitely a lot of cool things. The art style is beautiful. Like I said, it's, it's different, but in its own right, it's great. But like I said, it doesn't really tend to that horror genre. It doesn't seem, the game never felt scary. Like things jump out and things happen in this game, but it doesn't feel like I'm frightened for the most part. And it's mainly because the art style seems more kind of, I'm not gonna say kiddie, it's just not as maybe realistic as most of us are used to. So it doesn't seem as scary as maybe you'd expect a horror game to be. So on Steam, the Padre is coming in at $23, which actually, for what the game offers, is a pretty good price in my opinion. For me, personally, I just couldn't get into the game as much as I would have liked. I think there's aspects of this that people are really gonna enjoy, but personally for me, it just wasn't there. I'm gonna give this one a six and a half. 
The Padre really does a good job of paying tribute to the classic horror game. The art style of this game is very unique for its genre. The puzzles could be difficult at times, but fans of a challenge are going to enjoy that aspect. I found the repetitive dialogue making me want to turn the voice audio right That's off though. And the controls on PC leave you wanting more as it can be difficult to navigate especially while in combat. This is some kind of beetle. 